Teddy, Grubby, wake up, it's story time. Hi, my name is Lana. Today, Teddy walks in to tell a story about the airship. Hi, my name is Teddy Ruxpin. Can you and I be friends? I really enjoy talking to people. I would like you to meet some of my other friends, too. We're going to have lots of good times together. Now, listen to this sound. That sound reminds you to open the book to page one. Each time you hear that sound again, you turn a page, okay? There's a picture of Grubby. He's been a good friend of mine for a long time. Say hello to our new friend, Grubby. Oh, hi there. How are you? Hmm? Remember, turn the page. Hey, Grubby. Do you remember this song? Yeah, I sure do. Your friend, your friend. Is one I'd like to be your friend, your friend, cause I like you, do you like me? My friend, my friend, I'd like for you to be my friend, my friend, I'm nice to you, you're nice to me. is a lovely word, it makes a lovely sound. Friends of people that you like, and like to be around. Your friend, your friend, is what I like to be. Your friend, your friend, cause I like you, do you like me? wanted to go in search of new and wonderful things. Then, one day, we found an old treasure map. The treasure was supposed to be hidden in the far-off land of Grundo. And so we left our homeland of Rilonia and set out on our great adventure. Let's go to the far-off places to search for treasures Grundo was a long way from Rilonia, and after walking for many days, it didn't seem like we had made much progress. Teddy, my feet are getting sore. I must have stepped on every rock between Rilonia and here. You didn't tell me that adventure seeking would be this hard on my feet. <laughs> As you can see, Grubby does have a lot of feet to worry about. So we decided to camp there overnight. The next morning, Grubby's feet were better, and we continued on our journey. That was the day we met Newton Gimmick. Oh, 
Uh, hello there. <laughs> uh, my name is Newton Gimmick, but everyone just calls me Gimmick. <laughs> I'm an inventor. Oh, yes, indeed. We discovered that Gimmick is a marvelous inventor. Oh, <laughs> I think marvelous inventor might be exaggerating. It would probably be sufficient to say, uh, uh, wonderful inventor. We also discovered that Gimmick is marvelous. We told Gimmick that we were on a journey to find a treasure. He said that one of his latest inventions might be very useful to us. Grubby and I were very interested. So we went to Gimmick's house to see just what this new invention was. Uh, yes, <laughs> here it is. I call it an airship. Hmm, it looks like a boat. Oh, well, as a matter of fact, it uh, did start out to be a boat, but then I realized that I'm not very close to water. No, you're not very close to water. Yeah, it would be kind of good for a boat to be close to water. <laughs> Precisely. That was my exact conclusion. But then the idea hit me. If a boat could float on water, it could also float on air, <laughs> if the air is hot, that is. Gimmick explained that by pumping hot air into a giant airbag under the ship, the hot air would rise and cause the ship to lift off the ground. It sounded logical, but somehow something didn't seem quite right. Teddy, uh, something doesn't seem quite right. As the airbag filled with hot air, the ship began to lift off the ground. Hey, Teddy, it's working. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, just as I expected. <laughs> uh, uh, make sure all the tether lines are tight. <laughs> Everyone, get aboard. The ship lifted off the ground, and his gimmick was delighted with his new invention. But somehow, something still didn't seem quite right. Do you know what it was? Teddy, something still doesn't seem quite right. And I think I know what it is. Oh! Hey, we're tipping over. Watch out, Bobby! The airship had turned upside down and crashed. Hmm, apparently uh, something wasn't uh, quite right. Oh, really? Maybe it was the hot airbag trying to get out from under the ship. Hmm, uh, yes, uh, Grubby. <laughs> that may be it. What Grubby said was correct. By any chance, did you expect what would happen? We discovered that the hot air should pull the ship up into the sky, not push it, which meant the ship would have to be suspended by ropes from the airbag. Indeed, Teddy. <laughs> and, uh, and once we had done that, uh, everything was all right. Well, almost all right anyway. You see, we could make the ship go up and down okay, but we couldn't steer it very well. In fact, we got stuck in a tree. Suddenly, we heard a tiny voice. Just what are you doing in my tree? Uh, 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 huh? uh, who said that? I said that, and I'll say it again. Just what are you doing in my tree? We discovered that the voice was coming from a tiny flying lady. Hey, would you look at that? What is it? I'm a wood sprite. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, no. There is no such thing as a wood sprite. Oh, no? And I suppose there's no such thing as a big bag of air stuck in my tree. But there it is, big as life. She was a real wood sprite, no bigger than a bird, and very pretty. Well, how about moving this bed? Oh. <laughs> do you really think I'm pretty? Oh, yes, I certainly do. <laughs> oh, aren't you sweet? <laughs> and who are you? Well, I'm Teddy Ruxpin, and this is Grubby, and this is Newton Gimmick. How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? My name's Leota. I'm pleased to meet you, and I'm sorry if we damaged your tree. Oh, that's all right. Is there anything I can do to help? Well, I'm not sure. 
You do understand the simple basics of aerodynamics, don't you? Uh, yeah, yeah, huh? Leota showed us how to get down out of the tree. Then she gave us some ideas about steering the airship. Now, in order for your airship to move in any given direction, you must apply a force in the opposite direction, such as this large, manually driven propeller. Then you will have to know something about the effect of wind and various aspects of navigation. It's very simple. <laughs> well, it all sounded very confusing at first, but Leota had been flying all of her life and knew just what we should do to make the airship work. And so at last the airship flew perfectly. We said goodbye to Leota. Goodbye! 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 Goodbye, everyone! And we were off on our way to Grundo in search of adventure and maybe to find a treasure. Grubby and I had met two new friends, Newton Gimmick and Leota the Wood Sprite. And I think we started to learn that it probably wouldn't matter too much if we ever found the treasure or not. The important thing would be the people we would meet and the things we would discover along the way. Come and discover the world with me. There are lots of people who can do lots of things to see. So come and discover the world with me. Like what makes the leaves in autumn fall? What irritates a honeybee? And others only three. What really makes the snow in winter fall? How does a sheep dog see? How come my favorite rubber ball can bounce into a tree? And sometimes when I trip and fall, why does the clown jump on me? Huh, I never thought about that. Come oh, and discover the world with me. There are lots of people we can do lots of things to see. So come and discover the world with me. That a snowflake knows just what shape it's gonna be. Now, do you think a duck has toes? Why does a dog have wings? Why are there feathers on my nose? Because of me to see. Where does a balloon go when you set it free? And overnight, a mushroom grows, but it takes years to grow a tree. <laughs> Don't ask me. Okay, I'll man discover the world. Lots of people we can meet, lots of things to see. So come and discover the world with me. Come on, Teddy. Let's go. It's the world for the world. 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 Bye guys, thanks for watching.